with us today because this, I think, is one of the most needed subjects right now, spiritual warfare. And it's, it's surprisingly how many people don't want to talk about it or don't really understand it or get all confused about it. There is, there is a lot of spiritual warfare that is going on, and we have to really learn and discern what it really is and what the battles are, because a lot of times, sometimes we tend to give the devil too much credit. It might be from our own choice. So, I mean, when you take this, and this is according to scripture and according to what the saints said, so I'm, I'm, I just, onward Catholic soldier, let's talk about Amen. it. Amen, yeah. You know what happened with the book is that um, I was talking about spiritual warfare and I was traveling around, and so often people would say, oh, you know, that's the old church. We, we don't do that anymore. We, I mean, do you really believe in the devil? And it, what I really found is that the problem today isn't so much that we give him too much credit. It really is that we give him too little credit. And we don't even acknowledge him, even within the church. And so what, what I decided to do is when I, I really felt prompted to write the book, and I thought, I'm not just going to write a book on spiritual warfare. I want to write... I want to cover all that the saints covered, all that the church teaches, all that, so that it's not my book. It, it has nothing to do with me. And I really got to the point where I, I would say to people, you know what, don't argue with me because I'm, I'm nobody. <laughs> you go argue with Augustine. You go argue with St. Athanasius. You go argue with St. Anthony. You go argue with Thomas Aquinas, with Catherine of Siena, with Padre Pio, with Mother Teresa. You know, you go argue with all these saints for 2,000 years, men and women, east and west, uh, you know, from the beginning of the church right up to the, the most present five popes. You go argue with them. And, you know, you tell them it doesn't exist. And so that's really how, how the book kind of came about. Well, you know, I remember when um, I'm, a, I'm a convert to the faith, and uh, I remember I came back from Medjugorje, and I had this um, miraculous healing, and I was on fire, you know. Okay. And I was like, all right, I want to be a soldier for the Lord. Sign me up. And what I really didn't realize is that you have to go through boot camp, and that when I was reading something about your book, it, it, you use those exact words. Sure. You know, you're going to get your boots, and you have to go through it. And it's really a good way to put that, because when spiritual warfare comes to you, or when somebody goes off to battle, how do they know how to fight? They learned it through boot camp. Right. And I think you brought out a great point that a lot of times the church isn't talking about it. And so how do we know? How do we know what's real? How do we discern what spirits? we have, and, and uh, how do we really put on those boots? Well, it's interesting, and you hit the two extremes, someone who doesn't care or doesn't want to know about Satan mm -hmm. or blames Satan for everything, but then also the prideful person, the person who says, I am going to do battle for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And one of the things you'll learn in spiritual warfare very quickly is you never precede the Lord. You never go out ahead of him. Mm -hmm. If he calls you to do battle, you do battle. Right. But if he doesn't call you, you stand there and wait. You know, and St. Joan of Arc said that. I, I wait for the Lord. On everything I do, I wait on him. And if yeah. he tells me to go, I go. If he tells me to sit here and really get beat up, then that's what I do. And so that's one, it's a really important lesson is we want to make sure that uh, what we're doing is within the Lord's will, not our own will. And too often we can go to, say, a Medjugorje. We can go to a, a conference. We can get all, come all fired up and we're ready to go. And the problem is we're ready to go for ourselves mm -hmm. without checking with the Lord. And so it is really important to go through that boot camp. And the church does have a boot camp set up. I mean, there are, there are, we, there are places we can go to to learn this information. It's not anything that's brand new. But mm -hmm. what it is, I think, for, for, you know, for this time is we as Catholics haven't done a very good job of, of sharing what that boot camp is and mm -hmm. giving the information. And, and hopefully what this can do in just some small way is having in one place information that people can go to and say, okay, this is what spiritual warfare is. This is, uh, I may not be called to it, by the way, but if I right. am called to it, this is what I do and, and this is how I would go ahead and do it. And knowing how to discern if it is spiritual warfare. Or sure. Not. Do you, I, I don't know if this ever happened to you, but the more, like, if we're, we get great letters from Focus or we do something that's really big or going to affect a lot of people, we get attacked. It's, uh, it's, it's, sure. it's just, we just know. And we say, look, if everything was going right, we know we were doing something wrong because the devil doesn't want to do that. He's yes. not going to say, oh, shucks, let me go. You know? And I think it was, it was very profound, and I love that in your book where you start off saying, look, when you were born, you were born into a war zone. Absolutely. You, 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 are, you, you, you come in here yeah. ready for this, and you're going to have to choose to do battle for the Lord. And a lot of people don't realize that that is a, that we have to be that regardless and never before look what's going on in our culture and look at the families that are being attacked and i think a lot of that is you use the right word this apathy and people say 
well, I don't know if he really exists, or does evil really exist, or something like that. And who benefits by that? The devil. Right, the evil one. He yeah. benefits by getting us to believe that he doesn't exist, or getting us to not care whether he exists, or, and getting us, again, as we said, to blame him too much. And so there is discernment that needs to go on. And, and three things to keep in mind. I mean, Aquinas tells us there's three sources of evil. There's the world, the flesh, and the devil. And then Peter Kreeft, in one of his books, talks about how the world and the flesh wouldn't be a problem except for the devil. You know, so at the basis of this is that sin, is that sin of, of non-servium, I will not serve. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I, when I speak to um, teens, and this, this happened to me at, at my parish, I was speaking to our youth group, and I was like, okay, Lord, how can I make sense of this? How can I give them this big book in just a little bit so, and, and have it not, not scare them at the same time? That's a good point. And, and so it took four days, four days of prayer and me trying to make him tell me and him not willing to tell me until I was willing to shut up and, you know, just listen. And so, really, after communion, and this is 5 o'clock Mass on Sunday, I'm getting ready to speak about 6.30. After communion, I'm like, Lord, I don't have anything. What do you want me to say? And, and he, he's so good. He speaks to me exactly the way I need to be spoken to. And he said very lovingly, shut up. And let me shut up talk and listen. <laughs> okay, fine. So I decided to listen, you know, and, and he said, here's what I want you to say. And it was two sentences. And from those two sentences, was, it, it was the power of the Holy Spirit, really. It was just amazing because when I spoke those two sentences, there was, an, there was a hush over the room. And from that, just everything else just flowed. And those two sentences were very simple. God loves you, and he wants to spend eternity with you. And that's the most important thing to understand about spiritual warfare, is God loves you, and he'll do everything he can, short of impinging on your free will, mm -hmm. to get you to spend eternity with him. He loves you. And that's the most important thing. Now, the second thing is, is that Satan hates you. Mm -hmm. And he wants to spend eternity with you. Right. Not because he wants, wants you particularly. He doesn't like you. Mm -hmm. But he hates God so much, he wants to take some of that joy away from God by stealing you. And, and that's really the essence of spiritual warfare. So Satan is involved in very many ways. You know, if I trip and fall on the curb, eh, sometimes that's my trip and fall. Right. If I sin, and sometimes that's just truly my sin. Mm -hmm. But don't doubt that Satan, and Satan also is code word for the other demons, the other fallen angels. It's not just one entity. There are many many fallen angels. And they can be the way, same way an angel is a messenger of God. The fallen angels are, in a sense, a messenger, not so much of Satan, but of evil. Mm -hmm. And so they can and do try to cause us harm. Mm -hmm. uh, the bottom line to it, all of it, though, is if I'm in a state of grace, I might have to suffer, but I will not be harmed. Mm -hmm. You know, I might have to suffer. I mean, Jesus was crucified, and we're That's called right. to take up our cross daily. That's but right. was any harm done to him, ultimately? No. Mm -hmm. You know, and it'll be the same with us. We might have to suffer for our Lord. We might have to pick up our cross and, and carry it. Mm -hmm. But we cannot be and will not be harmed unless we choose to open the door, through sin, primarily. Well, you talk about um, <clears throat> two kind of evil spirits. You say there's the evil spirits... Could you go into that a little bit? Of the sure. Well, actually, there's the world, the flesh, and the devil would be the three sources of evil. Okay. But then there's another part to this, which is um, the discernment of spirits, is who is operating, who's speaking here. And there's three spirits. There's the Holy Spirit, uh, there's the human spirit, and there's the evil spirit. Mm -hmm. And we obviously never want to do what the evil spirit is calling us to do. Mm -hmm. um, and, and if we were really smart, we'd probably not want to do what the human spirit is calling us to do, because most times that's not really all that good. What we want to try to do is to always discern the Holy Spirit, and figure mm -hmm. out what is the Holy Spirit calling me to do in this very moment in time. And if, if we were able to discern that and we were able to do that, we would have no sin. And we wouldn't have a perfect life in the sense of a perfect world and everything would be cushy and easy, as you said. Mm -hmm. We'd still have struggles. We'd still have crosses to bear. But we'd be able to bear them because we'd have the grace of God working with us. And that's a hard thing. We have to discern who's, who's talking here, which one of those three spirits is working. Well, how do you personally go about that? Uh, through lots of prayer, uh, trying to remain in a state of grace. Because mm -hmm. if you're not in a state of grace, don't discern, because you'll discern <laughs> improper, imp improperly. So make sure you're in a state of grace. Second, secondly, make sure you have a life of prayer, mm -hmm. uh, a consistent life of prayer, which includes mass, uh, you know, rosary, and, and uh, divine mercy chaplet, adoration uh, once a week if you can. I mean, all those things. And then I think the third thing for safety is to ask for some sort of confirmation. Yes. Uh, whether it's from, um, I mean, uh, again, praise God, I have such a beautiful wife, and, and she very often will get a confirming word. You know, uh, in fact, when I was getting ready to write the, the Spiritual Warfare book, I just finished up a first book, and it took a lot of time away from the family to write the other book, and, and I was kind of done with that, and it's like I gave birth, and now I was kind of moving on, and I really kind of felt like I was supposed to write this book. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I thought, oh, boy, how am I going to approach my wife about this, you know, to get, to get you know, that time again, to really commit to this. And I was like, okay, Lord, if you want me to write this book, you're going to have to tell her because I'm not going to go tell her, you know. 
And I got was, enough battles. That's right. That's, it, it was so amazing, though, that very next morning, this is at nighttime, mm -hmm. and that, that morning I was up early and I started to really work on the book. It was the first words I typed. That morning after adoration, my wife comes in and she knocks on the office door and she says, Honey, I don't know how to tell you this, but you're supposed to write another book. Come I like, on. And I said, What is it? What is it on? She said, It's on spiritual warfare. I said, Well... I don't know how to tell this, but I actually started it this morning. <laughs> you talk, don't you love confirmation? So, yeah, <laughs> you, you love know, confirmation. Even when you know you love that confirmation. Give it up to God and say, Lord, I think I hear you, mm -hmm. but I don't want to be prideful here. I don't want to get my human so, spirit in. Yep. So have somebody else speak to me through somebody else, friend, stranger, spouse, whoever it may be.